Well, good morning, everybody. Glad to see you here, you know, on this uh, kind of chilly, you know, Tuesday morning. So um, excited about this, you know, week. Got the uh, good things. Got my dog in the background. Hello, Marley. Marmars. Hello. You're a good dog. Good job, puppy, wherever you are. Um, so excited to have you here today. We are going to go through two chapters today, Isaiah chapter 38 and 39. Now, this happened uh, at the time of the Assyrian invasion, you know, to, you know, of Judah. But what's fascinating is I know we just kind of went through that, but it's like Isaiah put the orders differently. So this actually happened before uh, God rescued them from the Assyrians. So this is what took place. Uh, and this exact same events, as I've mentioned to you before, you know, uh, is in Second Kings chapter 20, verses 1 through 11. So it's in more than one place, you know, uh, in our Bibles, you know, as we look at this as well. And so um, let's jump into chapter 38. About that time, Hezekiah became deathly ill. So what we know from Second Kings chapter 18, verse 2, combine that with Second Kings chapter 20, verse 6, is that Hezekiah was 39 years old when he learned he would die. Okay, so that's really, really young. And that's the, that's the reason you're going to see some of the responses from Hezekiah. Uh, it says, And the prophet Isaiah, you know, son of Amoz, went to visit him. He gave the king this message. This is what the Lord says. Set your affairs in order, for you are going to die. You will not recover from this illness. When Hezekiah heard this, he turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. Remember, O Lord, how I have always been faithful to you and have served you single-mindedly, always doing what pleases you. Then he broke down and wept bitterly. And so as we see, you know, here, obviously, you know, um, he's just been told he's going to die. And uh, his first response as a 39-year-old is going to be, yeah, I don't want to die. I'm not ready to die. I've been trying to do everything that you've asked. Now, you need to understand the old covenant versus the new covenant. There was so much more you reap what you sow, uh, meaning um, um, how you behave is going to be how you get rewarded. Or the new covenant with Jesus is what he has done is what's going to give us the reward, what he has done. And so there's kind of a difference in understanding who God is and our connection to him as well. Verse four, then the message came to Isaiah from the Lord. Go back to Hezekiah and tell him, this is what the Lord, the God of your ancestor, David says, I have heard your prayer and have seen your tears. I will add 15 years to your life and I will rescue you and this city from the king of Assyria. Yes, I will defend this city. And so when, once again, I want you to step just right there and just think about this phrase, I have heard your prayer. So if we don't believe again that prayer is an important, we need to reread passages like this. By all indications, has Hezekiah not prayed this prayer, he would have been, his life would not have been extended, he would actually have died. And so because he prayed and because God saw his prayers, he answered his prayer. And so, again, prayer, the reason we pray is for two primary reasons. Some people will say it's one, but it says two primary reasons. Number one, prayer changes us. When we have a chance to stand before a holy God and submit our praises, prayers, offerings, confessions, all that kind of stuff, it changes us. That's the first and primary. Secondly, it changes circumstances. It changes circumstances. And so I don't want you to forget that within us, we have the power from God to change the circumstances because he is ultimately in control, wanting to work not just in us, but through us into this world. It says, then this message came to Isaiah from the Lord. Go back to Hezekiah and tell him, this is what the Lord, the God of your ancestor David says. I've heard your prayers and seen your tears. I will have 15 years of your life and I'll rescue you from the Syria. Oh, sorry, I already read all that. This is the sign from the Lord to prove that he will do as he's promised. I will cause the sun's shadow to move 10 steps backward on the sundial of Ahaz, so the shadow on the sundial moved backwards 10 steps. It would be like moving backwards 10 hours because the sundial, you know, that they had back then was just kind of measuring where the hours of the day were based on the, on the radius of a floor. And so they say, and so God says, watch this. I'm not going to just stop time. I'm going to move it back, you know, 10 hours approximately being able to do that to prove what he is saying is actually true. Then he says this, when King Hezekiah was well again, he wrote this poem, poem. I said, in the prime of my life, must I now enter the place of the dead? Am I to be robbed of the rest of my years? I said, never again will I see the Lord God while still living, in, still in the land of the living. Never again will I see my friends or be with those who live in this world. So he just laments about his life being cut short, how things are not going to take place, and that he's mourning that all those kinds of things can take place. Yet, 
he actually turned to God and he praises God and he thanks God for healing him. If we jump down to verse 20, think of it. The Lord is ready to heal me. I will sing his praises with instruments every day of my life in the temple of the Lord. Isaiah had said to Hezekiah's servants, make an ointment from figs and spread it over the boil and Hezekiah will recover. And Hezekiah asked, had asked, what sign will prove that I will go to the temple of the Lord? So what's fascinating as you, as you, as you look at this is a couple things. Uh, number one is that God uses modern medicine, right? He didn't just heal Hezekiah in this case. He actually had Isaiah tell them to make an ointment from figs and spread it over the boil, the boil that was killing him. And that's how he was healed. So when we pray, God uses some miraculous times, but he also uses the opportunities that are set before us. But what an opportunity to be able to pray. Now, when we do, when we entrust ourselves to God, sometimes it works out for good, sometimes not so good. You know, and so let's kind of see what happens next in chapter 39. And you can read the rest of 38 there. Chapter 39, it says, Soon after this, uh, Merab Dak Baladin, son of Baladin, king of Babylon, sent Hezekiah his best wishes and a gift. He had heard that Hezekiah had been very sick and that he had recovered. Hezekiah was delighted with the Babylonian envoys and showed them, notice this, showed them everything as his treasure houses, the silver, the gold, the spices, and the uh, aromatic oils. He also took them to see his armory and showed them everything in his royal treasuries. There was nothing in his palace or kingdom that Hezekiah did not show them. Why would he do such a thing? Well, one of the reasons is, again, he's afraid of the Assyrians. He knows that the Babylonians are a rising superpower. And he thinks, I need to align myself with these guys as they kind of rise up into power. The problem with that is, again, he's, he's, he's doing the same thing that Israel and we do on a regular basis. Relying on our own strength, our own understanding, our own you know, insecurities, instead of relying on God. And so he shows them everything, shows them everything they have and every, all the weaknesses. It was just going to entice Babylon later on to actually come in and destroy, you know, uh, the kingdom, you know, of Judah, you know, at that time. And, and, and understand this, this is not going to happen, you know, right away. It's going to be a hundred years before they carry away, carry away the royal treasuries and all those kinds of things. But they did come just as we're about to read. Isaiah is going to prophesy. Verse three, then Isaiah, the prophet, went to King Hezekiah and asked him, what did those men want? Where did they come from? Hezekiah replied, they came from the distant land of Babylon. What did they see in your palace? They saw everything. I showed them everything I own, all of my royal treasuries. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, listen to this message from the Lord of heaven's armies. The time is coming where everything in your palace, all the treasures stored up by your ancestors until now will be carried off to Babylon. Nothing will be left, says the Lord. Some of your very own sons will be taken away into exile. They will become eunuchs who will serve in the palace of Babylon's king. Then Hezekiah said to Isaiah, this message you have given me from the Lord is good. Like what? For the king was thinking at least there'll be peace and security during my lifetime. Now, so you're talking about not thinking about the next generation. So once again, a hundred years, it's going to be more than a hundred years for Babylonian carries away the royal treasures. And do you know who he carried away with him? Mm, a guy by the name of Daniel and that his na their names got changed to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they became eunuchs in service of the king and the palace in Babylon. And so there's no doubt that Hezekiah started out as a godly king. And overall, his, way, his reign was of outstanding godliness. And you can read about that in 2 Kings chapter 18 again. Yet his beginning was much better than his end. Hezekiah did not finish well. God gave Hezekiah the gift of 15 more years of life. But added years did not make him a better or got more godly man. So maybe you should have actually listened to God and said, yeah, it's going to be the best actually to go with you at a young age because I would have left on top. I don't know. But I do know that as we close today, what's on your heart? What's on your mind? Can you and I begin to pray and lift that up to the name of our Lord, knowing that prayer is first going to change us and also as a chance and opportunity to change circumstances as we cry out to him? Let's pray. Jesus, I pray for all those who don't yet know you. I pray for those who are watching now and in the future. And as they watch this, they'd be encouraged by your power to do amazing things through prayer. But I pray it would always be done according to your design and your will. And that we would give you all the glory and honor. We love you and thank you for today. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey guys, have a great rest of your day today. And uh, once again, we'll jump into Isaiah chapter 40 you know, uh, tomorrow. Love you guys.